Welcome to a new chapter called Dynamics, where we are going to look at the question, why do things move the way they do? In the previous chapter, kinematics, you see the ball fly here, the ball fly there, the rocket and everything. But why do they do that? We're going to focus on, I guess, three main ideas and of course many sub-ideas. These ideas come from this guy called Newton. Newton came up with three laws. Law number one, number two and number three. So using these three laws, we're going to answer the, the, the question, why do things move? Or not move, or move in a different way. So the other day, I was browsing through Twitter, and I came across this picture, which is from Reddit. And here is the picture, not picture, gif of a dusty tennis racket. Now, someone's going to drop a tennis ball on it, and I want you to observe very carefully what happens to the dust on the tennis racket. Let's look and see. In slow motion. Hmm, okay. If you didn't catch it, let me rewind to that spot and pause for you to see. The dust, the record, everything is pretty much chilling there. Suddenly, a tennis ball, tennis ball comes and knocks the record away. Now, in this moment of time, or something looks very strange. You see this shape of the record uh, in the form of the dust. Why the dust don't fall down straight away leh? Why the dust want to chill there? That is the answer to the definition of what is mass. So in physics, we come to this uh, definition of mass that goes something like this. What is mass? Ah? How heavy are you? 60 kg? Is that a mass? Kind of. Uh, we, we kind of define this mass as the amount of matter. Or also, we can use this word, the amount of inertia. Ooh, what is inertia? Inertia there is a term we use as a tendency. Oh, let me write that down. Tendency or for something to maintain its motion. So how do we write the explanation? It's a tendency to maintain its state of rest. Means not moving. Okay. Or uniform motion in a straight line. Motion in a straight line. Which means uniform motion in a straight line, also known as the velocity, which is a vector, cannot change direction, ah, is constant. Okay, so in other words, it's like a resistance to motion, uh, to change in motion. Resistance to change in motion. Ah, yeah, no space ah, right here. Lah. Let's look at that carefully again. So, so, so you got mass means you got inertia. Got inertia means you don't want to change motion. Very stubborn. In other words, if you are very heavy, oh, you keep moving forever and ever. For example, a big, 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 big elephant. Let's say this elephant is, I don't know how, actually I don't know how heavy this elephant. Maybe Google and see lah, but I, I just want to write 100 kg. Def okay, maybe five, 400 kg. That's really heavy. Never mind, 400 kg. And then you, your elephant is at first at rest. Then this poor guy wants to push the elephant to get it to move. Is it going to be a tough job? Yes, very hard to push. Like, uh, very hard to push. The elephant does not want to move. But if the elephant is already moving at a super fast speed, I, I, why would the elephant be on roller coasters? I don't know. Maybe moving at five, um, 15 meters per second, which is really fast. And then the poor man say, stop, 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 stop moving. It's going to be very hard for the elephant to stop because 400 kg, le, so much inertia, it cannot stop. So you see, once this elephant is moving, if we assume there is no friction, ah, no friction, this object will keep moving forever and ever and ever until somebody say stop, either friction or some other force. It's also kind of similar, la, okay? Imagine this is you lying on the bed. Wow, very nice, ah, lie on the bed. Got morning class, got something, ah, yeah. Very hard to, to start moving, right? Because you have mass. You have inertia. What is your inertia? 60 kg? 50 kg? 80 kg? Very hard to get out of bed. Okay. But once you start moving already, oh, very hard to stop running. For example, let's say I'm running super, super fast. It's hard to stop. 
because of inertia. So Mr. Newton sat down and he stared at all this elephant and things and he, he said, let's make this official. Let's make a law, the first law of motion. So Newton's first law of motion, so you should know the definition. A body or any object will continue or continues at rest or continue at constant velocity hmm. unless something stopped the object. So we say unless acted on by a resultant this can be many forces, but we just say ah, yeah, overall ah, resultant means add together all the forces. So a resultant or external force. There we go. Okay, so imagine I take a ball, I roll it along a horizontal surface. If I assume there's no friction, this ball should continue forever and ever and ever at the same velocity until it hit a wall. Or hit some some mud. So this one, uh, the key idea is either at rest or constant velocity. All is based on the same idea that there is no change in velocity. Then keep going. If you're at rest, you chill there. If you're moving, keep moving. By the way, a side definition of force, which is down here, it's a it's an informal one lah. But in case you are find it hard to understand what is force, you can explain it as kind of the push and pull of an object of an object what does the force do it causes it to change uh change what uh? change velocity or change shape so once again note this is an informal definition of force Later, in another video, you will learn the formal A-level definition of force, okay? So imagine, lah, okay, you've got a ball here. You pull this way, you pull that way, maybe you squash like that, okay, then you'll change shape, start moving, and things like that. Now, before we move on, let's pause and exercise our brain a bit. Here is a, a picture I took from a past year. I'm going to change it. I'm going to ask our own question. So here you have a ball thrown vertically up into the air. We've seen this many times in kinematics. So the ball go up lo, to the top before it come down. Now let me ask you, at which point is there a force from the hand on the ball? Or I should say, actually, uh, this ball can go up. Uh. What keeps it going up? So I'm going to write that out. What keeps it going up? Choice A, force on the ball. Choice B, something else. I don't know. What do you think? Pause this more video if you need to think a little bit longer. What what keeps the ball going up? Why it can go up one? Now, if you've thought about this carefully in kinematics, this question is like, I uh, miss. So I understand now. But, 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 wait, wait. So actually, oh, it is not a force that keeps the ball going up. It is something else. The answer, if there were anything, would be inertia. Huh? Inertia? Go equation one. Uh. No equation. It's just a concept. The moment when the ball is in contact with the hand, that moment down there only got force from the hand. Give you an initial push. Okay? Then once the ball is in the in the air, not touching the hand anymore, the ball is by itself already. Only got one force pulling it down. Nani. You see this force is pulling it down, not pushing it up. So what keeps it going up? Inertia. Until eventually you run out of energy and then no more final energy already. Okay? So remember, uh, what keeps the ball going up? Inertia, not force. So likewise, if you have a rocket ship in space that is firing and traveling in this nice curvy path, traveling, traveling, suddenly at point two, the engines shut off. What path does the rocket ship follow? I'm going to assume there's no other forces in this universe. So how would the rocket ship travel? After that, go continue like this, or go like this, or go straight line. How will we know? Think of inertia. Oh, an object will keep moving at a constant velocity. So it means whatever at point two, uh, there's no more force already. So 
If there are no force acting on object, it will just keep moving in a straight line until it hits something or another force act on it. Okay, so that is the path. I'm going to go where it is on a constant velocity, including the direction. Now, a lot of students keep asking me, but, but miss, isn't there an equation for inertia or something like that? No, not inertia, but, but to help our brains a bit, we use this term called momentum. So momentum is how we kind of quantify inertia of an object. Momentum, you see down there, is we use the symbol P for momentum. I don't know why we choose P, but okay, P. Momentum, we take mass times velocity of an object. And don't forget, momentum is a vector. Velocity is still a vector, so direction matters. So if you want to define what momentum is, we, we just talk about the equation. No? We say this is the product of mass and motion. It's kind of like a, a, a quantity of motion. Got inertia. How much? Uh, calculate momentum. Ah, calculate momentum. Save. Give us a number that we can actually use. So this one equation, you will use it a lot in A-levels. Uh, is there a unit for it? Yes. Mass times velocity. Oh. Okay. So the unit will be mass kg times velocity. Ms negative 1. You will see another unit for this later, but I'm going to write it out. Uh, that unit will be force times second. Ooh, that's an interesting one. But we only know where that comes from when we look at Newton's second law down there. See, it's picking out already. Okay, so momentum. How do we better understand this? Here we have an object traveling with a velocity V, hit the wall and bounce back. Ping, bang, boom. Okay, kind of like a, a, a collision here. Which property of the object is not conserved? What does conserve mean? Ah? Conserve is a word you will see a lot. Uh, it kind of means like uh, same before and after. Didn't change ah? after something happened. Well, here the something happened is the collision ah, that happens in a, a moment in time. So what is not the same? Eh, let's look carefully at what are the choices. First choice says kinetic energy. What's kinetic energy again? Ah? Kinetic energy we know as half mv square. So you see the speed of the ball? A v oh. Then after that collision also v. Oh yeah, then same lah. So same lah. No change. So it's conserved. Okay, we want the not conserved one, right? So this is not the answer. Let's look at mass. Did the mass of the ball change? Ah? Here is mass, here is mass. No more, they didn't say oh. So did the ball break in half, explode, become dust? Nope. Okay, so mass is the same. Or the mass is conserved. Momentum and speed, the last two choices. Which one is conserved? I would say that speed is conserved. The same conserved because it is V. At first, initial is V. After collision, final, is still V. So speed is conserved. That means momentum is the answer. But why is momentum not conserved? Because if we try to calculate the momentum of this uh, ball or collision happening here, the direction actually matters. So in the beginning, this ball, before it hits the wall, has a momentum of mass... Let's write this, uh, initial... Oh yeah, right here. Lah. Initial momentum is mass times velocity but wait velocity got direction so uh, 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 we need to choose the direction okay we see everything to move to the right is positive anything that move to the left is negative you define this so this is positive v okay good very good positive v done then after collision you have a momentum to the left because the object is moving to the left ma. so you have momentum to the left oh. so this is final momentum Mass times negative velocity. So that's negative mv. Therefore, they are not the same. Because one is positive, one is negative, not conserved. So this is the answer. I'm going to write that down. Not conserved for the object. Because we are looking at the object. Right. 
So remember, ah, momentum of everything that is moving or not moving, I guess no momentum. And that's kind of a way we quantify inertia. So make sure you think deeply and carefully about Newton's first law of motion and momentum. And we'll see you in the next video. We'll go into Newton's second law of motion and apply it to more scenarios. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.